Well, hello everyone. Wonderful to be here in Berlin. The sun is shining, a little cold. I don't know what you think, but uh, Amsterdam is generally wet. So I was very happy to, uh, to be here. And I was thinking what would be relevant for, for each of you really to talk about. And I thought I'm going to talk about seven things that are really key to how we look at marketing. And then you maybe say, why seven? Well, you have the seven sins, you have seven days, seven dwarfs. So it's a maximum amount that you actually can remember. So, so stay with me. But before I dive into things, um, I want to show you a little video. I will talk about it a bit more. With so many choices on Booking.com, there are so many Tina Fey's I could be. So I hired body doubles to help me out. Girls Weekend Tina at a Miami Villa. Hey, Tina! Family Tina, who loves a hotel with breakfast included. <laughs> Tina, you're allergic to wheat. Cool mom Tina loves holiday homes with a view. Look at your mother! Romantic Tina, who booked this cozy suite for two. Who, thanks to free cancellations, can become non-committal Tina. Splurgy Tina loves a hotel near Rodeo Drive. Is that my credit card? This much Tina loves hotel Jim filter. And the five-star filter is perfect for five-star Tina Fey. Call me Tina. We love the peace and quiet. the resemblance is slipping a little bit, right? Wild Tina booked a farm stay to ride this horse! Glenn Close, my nemesis? With millions of possibilities. Bring the bread, we're going to Texas! On Booking.com, you can book whoever you want to be. Okay, thank you! It's my line. I don't need a body double for this one. Who are you? Oh, we have met Glenn. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. So um, I showed you this, it's entertaining, I think. Uh, Tina Fey, very famous in the US, less famous in, 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 in Germany and Europe. Uh, but you will see her on German television with her German voice, so uh, that will be interesting. Um, but I talked about the seven things that matter, and uh, I showed you this, and we actually launched this at the Super Bowl. It's kind of the biggest TV event in, in the US. More than 120 million Americans watch it. We also were the most watched YouTube ad on, um, uh, on YouTube, the most watched YouTube ad on YouTube. And, um, and the whole thinking for me is actually that I think linear TV, traditional marketing is a bit over, but what are the principles that really matter? And I thought I'd share those seven with you, and I start with one that I think is really, really important which if each of you, when you're managing your business, you really want to spend money to accelerate momentum. And I think a lot of companies get that wrong. And we all lived through the pandemic, and I don't know how that felt for you, but at Booking.com we were looking at negative bookings. Yeah? We were looking day by day, and we're like, oh my God, what's happening? And we really had to dial up and dial down. And I do think that that's one of the key things for all of us to really think about, is that only spend money you know, when you really see that momentum, when there's no demand, it doesn't really make sense, you know, to spend money. And, um, and that's really, really important. Then truth telling. Um, I think many brands have lost their way a little bit, eh, that they re really don't talk about the truth, what they're really about. And the key thing for us at Booking.com is we're a booking engine. Eh? We, we combine demand and supply, and that's what it is. And that doesn't sound very sexy, but it's actually really good. I hope all of you are using uh, Booking.com, and it's super easy. No? Like you just do click. When I'm in Germany, I can really drive anywhere, and I can book a hotel within seconds. And truth-telling sounds a bit unsexy. It's like going on a job interview. No? Like, like ideally, you want to tell the truth about yourself, but you make it look a little better, and maybe you dress a little better than, than normal. And that's exactly what it's about. And I think a lot of brands, without calling anyone out, you know, have lost that a bit. That you really say, oh, you're positioning like this, but I don't really think this is really who you, who you are. Then mission driven, um, we revamped actually our company mission five years ago and, um, and you probably want to do that is that you look at the missions of a lot of companies and they're really often very bad. You know, it's like we want to partner in the best way and, and we want to empower the industry too and you're like, mm, I don't really understand it. And again, really important that you have a mission that everyone in your company can remember and can, can work towards. And I'm actually quite proud of, of uh, our mission and make it easier for everyone to experience the world because that's the crux of Booking.com. 
Uh, we're not there to deliver the experience, so a cocktail on the beach or a nice swimming pool, that's really our partners, many of you here in the room, who are actually delivering that experience. That's not what we're doing. We're really in the middle of it. And if you would ask anyone within booking, in customer service, in product, in technology, hey, they will be able to play this back. And their role in their their jobs is really to make it easier and I think it's a very good filter. By the way, this is a picture of our new head uh, office in, in Amsterdam that we just um, opened uh, six months ago. Six and a half thousand people, it's beautiful if you ever dare come by and have a coffee. Um, it's, it's really nice. Then in the world of marketing, um, when you look how you consume content. Uh, you see that kind of linear TV is dying a death. Huh? I bet that many of you don't even have a cable uh, connection maybe anymore, or don't you, that you don't even watch uh, television. Um, so how do you really reach your, your customers? And, um, and I don't know if you know, supposedly on TikTok, you know, more Americans are looking on TikTok for restaurants than, than on Google. Yeah, so that's kind of a fascinating shift and that in the olden days people used to watch three hours of television and that's kind of now not even one hour and a half on average. But it's all about making your consumers, your cu customers feel something, learn something and do something. And I think many marketers don't, don't really realize what they're trying to achieve and it depends what channel you use of course. Then purpose, one of my favorite topics, I think something that each of you also really care about. Uh, you want to do business with a company that is good. Um, and I actually asked ChatGPT to really write down what brand purpose is and uh, it, it goes up and down so you have to read it really quickly uh, but I think you can see it. It's actually quite a good definition. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised with uh, ChatGPT coming up with a very, very good um, um, uh, definition. However, I think again a lot of brands get it wrong. A bottle of shampoo doesn't have purpose, in my opinion. Eh? It needs to wash your hair, makes it look nice, smell nice. I don't use a lot, as you can tell. But uh, the point is, if a company completely positions themselves around purpose, is that really true? Isn't that a bit fake? You know, like, I really don't get that. Eh? When you eat mayonnaise, I want mayonnaise to be nice. And uh, not necessarily that it's all about reducing food wastage. You know, so that's kind of something for all of you to think about because I think lots of companies are getting it, getting it wrong. And really think, a booking, that purpose is definitional. It's really important when you talk about things like sustainability. Clearly, we have a huge role to play to help you know, the world to become more sustainable. Each of us in our companies need to do our best there. But I don't think it's actually completely definitional. The same for diversity and inclusion. You know, you really want to be careful to be seen as pinkwashing, you know, doing things and just putting your, your uh, rainbow flag next to your logo. That's not the point. And that's the reason we, for example, do big partnerships with Eurovision, one of my favorite events. It will be in Melbourne. Look at the Dutch um, um, entry. It's a little weird, but it might win. You never know because Eurovision is a little weird. But the reason we're really part of Eurovision is that it's probably one of the most inclusive events in Europe. Uh, and hundreds of millions of people are actually watching that. And the same for, for example, Amsterdam Pride, Manchester Pride, but then we're also a key partner of UEFA uh, that you will see in June, July during the Euro Cup. Then return on investment. And um, the lady before asked you not to leave, so please stay, stay, stay seated. Huh? This is the boring part. Um, but it's actually quite interesting that a lot of companies do not necessarily measure the return on investment on everything they invest in. And you really should. Huh? I really believe in that. It's really important. And, uh, and clearly it depends on what you want to achieve. Now booking, we look at the world uh, of travel in intent stages. Hey, we have a low intent uh, category, we have a medium intent category, and we have a high intent category. And depending on where we spend our money, we have different objectives. Hey, you saw this kind of Super Bowl ad. The main objective is really awareness and consideration, and we're measuring that to the, to the comma. Uh, really, really important. Medium intent, much more kind of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest. You know, people have an interest in travel, but they're not really ready to book. And then, for example, Google search is clearly a high intent, much easier to measure because you just look at when you know, people search and they click, they say, ah, that, that kind of worked. But um, I really would ask every one of you to think that through. If you ever in your company invest money, what is the return on investment? And it's actually very fine to say that something is belief driven, but don't make it up and be honest about the, the, the numbers. And then, um, I'm already at the last of the seven. I don't know how many of you have been, uh, been counting. Um, 
I think we probably all need to smile a bit more. I don't know if you agree. In the, in the current world of polarization and craziness, and as all of us reading far too much news and and um, etc. But it's a nice acronym that I learned in my early days when I worked for Unilever and ice cream. So I went from ice cream to technology. So and I can assure you there are lots of analogies, but I won't bore you with that uh, right now. But I really like this acronym because anything you do needs to be simple, memorable, interesting, linked with your brand and enjoyable. And it's a very good acronym to use that you say, hey, hmm, you know, this campaign we're doing or this kind of initiative or this promotion or this, this customer um, uh, campaign we're doing, is it really simple? Is it simple for, for customers to understand? Is it memorable? Is it interesting if you put your hand on your logo? Is it still you yeah, as, a, as a company? And clearly you want also to provide with a bit of um, enjoyment. So with that, I'm already at the end of my um, uh, little, little speech. These were my seven uh, things we believe matter in the world of marketing. And I can assure you that um, my team, some of, of them are in the, in the room, they're almost bored with me because I talk about the same stuff all the time. Uh, so I probably won't be invited next year because you'll be sitting here again, you hear the same story. Um, but I really believe there are a couple of fundamental truths that are important. And I think of the seven, you know, a lot of them are really, really important in, in any business, uh, not only in Booking.com, but also in your businesses. Uh, that you think about your mission, that you really think about your voice and your truth, um, where in the current day, you know, I think a lot of companies are getting it not completely right. But I think I will talk about that a little bit more with Leah. Um, so, um, Leah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs>